Hello, welcome to another part of the procedural train tool. So in this part, we're going to start out with our rigging system. So if you follow along, you would have a train looking like this. So now I want to figure out how can I automatically build a rig for this. Uh, so one of the default nodes to create a rig is using the skeleton node. So this will actually create a skeleton mesh for your geometry. So like for example, start to click. And this is, for example, then my rig for this train. So if you press enter. Uh, so this is basically what we want to do, but in a procedural way. So what you can see is that everything actually is just represented by attributes and points. And it's very interesting to know. So the whole rigging system, KinFX, is built around using attribute data and just building up those uh, attributes. So if you understand that, then you know that you can actually customize a whole lot of this. Uh, if you're familiar with Houdini, you can just write your own attribute system to do rigging and things like that. So let's delete this skeleton node back again. And what we want to do is for each uh, part of the train, we want to create a line. And this line is then being represented by a bone later on. Going back to our first loop, once we have our train part, I want to create a line uh, that is the same length as this uh, wagon. So I'm going to rotate the line in that same direction, which is here the X axis. And the length of this is, of course, based on the bounding box of this input. So again, here, as I did a couple of times before, we want to create a spare input. We want to grab our result. And then we would just want to simply grab the bounding box of how long this input was. So we're going to say minus one, and we want to get the, uh, the dx size. So along the x axis, how long is this object? And this will return then a certain number. So if I view this line, uh, it will be the same length as this string. So this is step one, creating a line that will later be converted into a bone. Uh, what I also want to do is I want to make sure we tag this as a group. I'm just going to call this, for example, curve. Uh, so this is curve, or you can call this rig as well. I'm just going to call it curve since it's not necessarily like a rig uh, right now. And this is something that we can just merge into our system. So we're going to create merge over here. And we should still be able to uh, get our results. Uh, but now if you look closely, there is actually like a small line now in this object. So what we can do here with our systems is to start to split that again. So we have our parts of the train. Uh, but now I want to extract or split based on the curve. So now I have this curve and if I enable the points, uh, we now have points as exactly where uh, we would have this part here. So with this curve, what we actually want to do is we want to plug this into skeleton node. Uh, so you can see that in the skeleton node, we can actually plug in a custom pre-made cache of geometry or rig. Now, before we do that, uh, I actually want to do some cleanup on this line. So one of the first things to do is place a sort node. Uh, we're going to sort uh, the point numbers here based on the X axis. So if we look at the point numbers, uh, they nicely go from zero to one. Um, what you can see is that there are, there is also a lot of overlapping points and we probably want to do a fuse on that. So fuse. So we have just zero, one, two, three, four. Then we can also do a group. Uh, by range, so group range node. And with that, uh, we can, for example, select the last part. So we're going to call this uh, last point. This is, of course, a point type. And we want to say get the last part. Uh, and we can, for example, invert that. Uh, now I want to delete that last part because I don't need four bones. So for each point, we will create a bone. Um, so we have three parts of the train, so I don't need like a fourth bone there. So I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to go here and slay delete the last point. So now we are deleting that part. Then I want to make sure we are cleaning all of the data just in case we might have conflicting data. So I'm just going to say, uh, don't remove uh, these and this, uh, but remove all attributes and groups. So just to make sure if you have some data here, 
that it is not intersecting with uh, my skeleton data. Um, so we are almost ready to plug this in. Uh, what I also can do is actually just transform uh, this line. So I can just, for example, move this a bit. If I want to maybe say I want this to be in a certain position, I can just move this up. Um, so maybe let's move it by 0.5. I might later come back to this value, uh, but I, I will see how, how things go for now. So with that ready, let's plug it into our skeleton. And we want to make sure we are stashing uh, the inputs. And press OK. So we're now having uh, these as bones uh, in our skeleton. Then we have our rig. So next part when it comes to rigging is of course assigning or skinning this to our geometry. So if I go back to my uh, split note here where I have my geometry on the other side here, I want to do uh, a few things here. So what I can do here is I can assemble this. So if I click this over here, I want to assemble this and I want to create back geometry here. So each part of this mesh is now represented by points. I want to transfer some data between those two. Um, I want to first of all do a bone capturing, so bone capture lines, and I want to use that of my rig. And with that bone capture, I want to now transfer data from these two. So transfer attributes. So I want to now get information from the bone capture uh, into my assembled pieces. Maybe let's go over here and uh, play around with the conditions and maybe increase here the blending to 10. So I might come back and, and check on that. Um, so what we want to do now is we sort of have skinned this to a hard surface. So we're not really doing soft uh, surface skinning here. Uh, so I want to now uh, unpack my geometry back again. So we're actually now seeing our geometry back. And with that, I want to now use a bone uh, deforming node. So this is used to preview uh, your meshes or to see if things are working. So first input will be our geometry. So this will be this one. Second input will be uh, our rig in the resting pose. So this is our skeleton. And the third input will be the deformation of the rig. And we're going to use a rig pose node. So rig pose. And now we can uh, deform the rig. And we are getting a error. And this might be because of the unpacking node. So when I unpack the geometry, I also need to transfer certain attributes. Uh, like I mentioned again at the beginning, uh, GFX and rigging in Houdini is based on a lot of attribute data. So if you know how to work with attributes, you will also understand that some that some of these processes about automatic rigging is just purely based on attributes. Uh, so what we want to do is actually pass on the bone capture data. And now my deformation node will work. So let me go into my viewport a bit more. Let's go to our rig pose. And we want to now click on our handle and click a bone and start modifying this. And as you can see now, I can start modifying the string. So this is sort of working. And we need a couple tweaks here, but it's almost working uh, as expected. So a few things that I want to tweak is, so for the metal parts here, I need some sort of like soft uh, skinning. I want to blend those uh, parts here so it doesn't fit better, so it fits better. Uh, also here, I feel my points of rotation should be more over here. So that might be because here of this offsetting here that we did. So if I preview my train here, and uh, let's go into the top view and just do it like so. Six, for example. Yeah, that looks close to the middle. Then we probably want to hit a stash input again. And let's see if that works better. So now we actually have a bit better control in here. And we also have an issue here with that model not being uh, able to get any information of the bone amount or bone capture. So first of all, let's look into this part here for soft skinning. 
So what I want to do for that is I want to do another splitting node. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split the geometry uh, based on if it needs if it needs soft skinning or hard skinning. And in our case, we can simply use uh, the attributes that we had of the pieces. So we still have the data of the piece number. So I know that, for example, here, uh, piece number A needs soft skinning. So in a split note, I will say that if uh, piece uh, is equal to uh, number A, and this is, of course, in the points, uh, then we need to extract this. So we're now extracting those from the rest. I can invert that. So this will use my uh, other system, so my heart skinning. So mainly why this is working is because of the packing. Uh, because we are packing geometry, it's not able to actually do soft skinning. It's just automatically going to say this full object has the weight of that uh, part. So with the soft skinning, what we actually need to do is we need to uh, copy the transfer node. And we need to transfer some data. So our first input will be, of course, those parts. And our second input uh, will be, funny enough, actually my result here of the impact data. And we're going to see what that gives us. Um, and in this case, uh, we also here maybe want to double check if we are only uh, transferring uh, the bone capture data. Because otherwise it will transfer normals, UVs, other data, colors, but we don't want that. Then we're just going to simply merge the geometries back together. And we're going to try this out to see if we need to tweak values. So I can already see here that this is sort of working. Uh, we have this soft bending here. Uh, what I noticed we can do here is in the transferring node, uh, if we go to our conditions, uh, we might need to play around with the sampling count. So if I play around with that, you can see that there is some improvement there. So we need to actually set this to a higher value, like for example, 200. Uh, and now this is actually doing a better job of that. Uh, it could use maybe some like blurring or maybe like a relaxing value on it to have it a bit better. Uh, but for our cases, this was more than enough to have that working. So now I have a procedural rig with that. Now the only thing then left here is to figure out uh, if this part uh, has some weighting value to it. So we might want to go to our uh, transferring node here. And maybe we need to increase some of this radius or maybe also the kernel value. Maybe we need to increase some of the radiuses. Um, let's say, for example, 20. Let's see if that worked. And that worked. So that is done. And let's now wrap up what we have here. So I'm going to go back into my asset now, digital asset. So edit my properties. And I want to actually now have uh, multiple output nodes. And we need to set this to two outputs. So we want to output a mesh and we want to output a rig. So we're going to press accept and apply and we're going to create output nodes. So I don't think I have created actually an output node before. So my first output will be uh, my geometry, which is the merged version here. So we're going to enable this. So this is my output. And then my second output, so I can copy the nodes, is then here my uh, rig here. Uh, so make sure I set this to one. So now we have that in place. So now I have this node. Uh, and what I can do here is I can copy paste the bone deform into this level now. Uh, so I just have one single node calculating this and I can plug in the data here and check on this level. So let's test our, our tool and add, for example, another one. Um, we probably want to build actually a default value as well um, for this train. So we can see that my train is not fully working anymore. And the reason for that is uh, every time I do something, I also need to update my stashing input. So when I press this button, uh, we can hit OK. And we will now have a new version of that. So then my rig will still work as expected. So we go like this. So that is why uh, in our assets menu, uh, if we go here, 
we need to actually grab this button and put it on the top, for example, and say reload rig or something or update rig. So update uh, rig. So now we have that correct result. Um, of course, uh, so now we have that button here at the top. What is also interesting to do is to actually skip this rigging pass because this will slow down the tool a little bit. Uh, if you really need like a, a tool that's super responsive in, in making these things, then you can just build a switch node, uh, which will then just skip uh, this pass of doing a rig node. So that's just something that I can recommend. And what I want to do here is then fill also that uh, default pattern. So I'm going to open our digital asset and I'm going to go to that multi parameter here. And we want to go to our default uh, values and fill in something. Uh, you can fill in something that fits nicely. Uh, for example, I'm going to maybe take B, C, A. I think that works really well in my case. You can build something yourself as well. It doesn't matter that much. It's just to have a default value in there. You can also like expand this menu more and more and more. But the main thing about this tool is to actually make custom patterns and also having that breaking option if you want that. So those were like the two main things that I wanted to show you here uh, with these videos. So now I can, for example, go to my multi-parameter. Um, let's just maybe just hit the reset of the values. And we can, for example, click a couple of them. And we are just adding now a default pattern. Also need to update my rig, of course, to make sure that works. There is a small warning icon at the rigging post node. Uh, that is because we are uh, like modifying a lot of bones that, are, that do not exist anymore. Uh, so I just need to hit reset there. And you can see that this works uh, as expected uh, when I reset this. So it's a quite nice tool if you want to do some automatic rigging. It's also a very basic setup here. And I hope you will see some of these possibilities about more working procedural in terms of making the geometry, but also in terms of doing automatic rigging and skinning. Next to you, I'm going to just simply show you how to export this to an FPX file and open this into a real. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.